in a world ravaged by war and chaos. A group of survivors must band together to brave the dangers of a post-apocalyptic landscape. The year is 2000, and the world has been plunged into darkness. The nuclear fires have burned out, leaving behind a wasteland of ruins and radiation. But amidst the rubble and despair, a glimmer of hope still remains. Join Dork Day Afternoon as they face off against marauding gangs, enemy soldiers, and even the harsh elements themselves in the world of Twilight 2000. Will our heroes survive the challenges ahead? Can they keep their own humanity intact? Or will they succumb to the harsh realities of life after the end of the world? Two Past Midnight, an actual play podcast by Dork Day Afternoon. Thank you for listening to Comics for Fun and Profit. This is Kyle Andrew with your sneak peek at next week, episode number 814 for comics originally releasing April the 4th and April the 5th. But before Drew and I get into what's coming out in your local comic book shops this coming Tuesday and Wednesday, Drew, is there anything we missed in the world of comics? Because I was not here last week with you, my friend. Comic book shops. Comic book shops. <laughs> comic get, book shops. If you're in Boston in the yard, not far from the car. <laughs> Uh, what's this what's this uh teenage mutant ninja turtle yes dude this was amazing news i was so happy to see this um our beloved tmnt uh last ronin which is of course you know our 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 friends eastman and laird getting back together to tell their post-apocalyptic teenage mutant ninja turtles it's like they reached into kyle's brain and said post-apocalypse turtles let's put them together yes and they're going to tell that story in a triple A video game, a la the way that they're doing uh, the new God of War style. And mm-hmm. I, for one, can't wait. Now, this is, of course, going to be five years down the road, but still, they're taking a property I like. They're making it a video game and they're doing something cool, you know, RPG mechanics, upgrade ability, all the things I like. They're doing a triple A studio, so there'll be a lot of money spent on it. Mm-hmm. Um, so. I, for one, think that's amazing. And also, that should put some heat on all of the number one issues I have of Last Ronin. So, the Last Ronin means there was only one turtle left, right? Correct. <clears throat> do we know which one it is? I or do. Is that, would that spoil it? I mean, you find out pretty early on. Mm-hmm. It's Mikey. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Is that who it should have been? Is that the right choice? No. I mean, he's on. If you're going down my list of favorite turtles, he's he's third. It's Donatello, Raphael, Michelangelo, and the other guy, Leonardo. Yes, Leonardo. Is that is that the is that the order? Did I did mm-hmm. I nail it? Yeah, you did good. Oh wow, look at that. That sunk in. That sunk mm-hmm. in from your childhood. That's amazing. Yep. Yeah. I can't remember anything of my daughter's childhood, but I remember that. <laughs> Do you remember? Well, because you 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 of course spurned my teenage mutant ninja turtles obsession by. Um, Thankfully, taping the episodes of the cartoon and yes, uh, delivering yes. them to my country, but with no television. Because, well, we had did have two two network t- channels, sometimes three if it was raining. So <laughs> if it was raining, we got PBS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could watch uh, Tom Baker Doctor Who. <laughs> Man, what a treat! What a treat that was for the yeah, Ellinger call me boys. Me a millennial? No, thank you. <laughs> no, no. You are firmly in the zenial. I've heard it called cuspers. You're a cusper. Oh uh, yes, yes. Uh, so you're a zenial, zenial cusper, um, and I like it. I think I think you guys are your own thing. There you go. I like. You're it. Definitely not millennial. You're definitely not as cool as Gen X. You're right there in the middle. <laughs> right. Absolutely. There, right there in the middle. Well, that's cool. I got I got some questions for you, Kyle. Came okay, in. Okay. Love um, questions. If you couldn't read American comics anymore, so all our all the comics you've read them all, you've read them all, and they stopped making them. Peace. Do you do you go European comics or do you go manga? I've already gone manga, so that's pretty easy. <laughs> Yo, you okay, can, you have, you have. Yeah. I, I don't. I, European. I've dipped my toe in both, mm-hmm. right? So European are really awesome, like uh, artistically awesome. Deep, uh, really well written, great, great comics. I don't know if there's the volume, what the volume is of them compared to manga, mm-hmm. but um, it, but I think I'd probably find plenty of manga too. So yeah, uh, I think I'd probably go manga too, and just hope it wasn't all backwards. 
Mm-hmm. And I actually, <laughs> you know, I delved into some anime, got caught up, and then instead of waiting years for things to be turned into anime, I jumped into the light novel series pre-manga <laughs> and then enjoyed the manga as they successively came out. But I needed the whole story in light novel form first. Okay, so light novels are 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 not uh, illustrated? Correct. Or they are illustrated? They've got a cover illustration, but they're not illustrated throughout. And so they're just easy readers? Why, is that why they're called light novels? Or they're just not very long? They're just not very long. They're they're essentially... 200 pages? Yeah, exactly. Something like that? Okay. Yeah, you know, two, three times a year, quarterly drops of stories or whatnot. And, then and you those read are usually, those? There's been a few series that I've yeah, wow. wanted to read bad enough that know. I did that. I did not know that. Yeah, um, so like... Things like Mashoko Tensei, I went went ahead and did all in light novel form, and then as the the uh, the uh, the uh, mangas came out, I did all them. I'm currently go th- going through all the mangas of Chainsaw Man. So, really, mm-hmm. wow, I had no idea. That is very cool. Mm-hmm. I and, and you're reading reading them, or you have you know, books on tape. What are you doing now? Now, when I say reading, I legit mean reading. When you say reading, you mean audiobooks, and we've fought over this for decades. Right. That is not reading. It is reading. It is reading. Um, <laughs> it's the same. Uh, and I'll fight you. You already have. <laughs> um, okay, that's cool. Uh, what's your favorite of these four types of genre comics? War, Western, Romance, Slice of Life. Slice of Life. Slice of Life, okay. Uh, what's your second favorite? War. All right, same. Um, I would yeah. go slice of life, war, western, and romance would be uh, dead last. Ask my wife. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. What is this romance you speak of? Yeah, exactly. Uh, what is the or who is the best comic book anti-hero? An anti-hero being the main Batman. character of a story, but one who doesn't act like a typical hero. Often act villainous. So. Mm. That would not be Batman in my mind. Just kidding. I like to consider him an anti-hero, but I would I I don't think so because he doesn't shoot anybody. I I mean I think I don't I don't consider Batman an anti-hero. That's a great question. I don't consider him an anti-hero. You can choose whoever you want. Um, mm-hmm. it's your it's your question. So of course your dude is an anti. Moon Knight's an anti-hero, correct? He does often act villainous. Not lately though. Um, Mm -hmm. I would say Constantine would be my anti-hero who drinks, he smokes, he cusses, he uh, possesses people, he does very questionable things. Um, A lot of villainous stuff, you know, the end justifies the means in a lot of his stories, you know, for the greater good. You know, some people might have to be sacrificed, that sort of thing. So in my mind, he's my guy, but... Uh, you know, there's so many. Uh, Wolverine would be a, probably an anti-hero. Magneto. Magneto is my number one. Magneto is a good one. He's because actually a villain, but sometimes no. he's a hero. I, I mean, it depends on perspective. Of course, you could even put Thanos in here based on the snap and things like that. You know, well, in the okay. end, okay. perhaps he was right and half of humanity should die yeah. for the greater If I good. could choose the half, I think I'm with you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but uh, yeah, I would say he's... They're villains first, but I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I don't know what an antihero is. Um, there's your there's your question because in my mind, an antihero is just somebody who's doing bad things, but you understand their means and you root for them as the protagonists. They're, Correct. And they're all they're actually the protagonists of the story because mm-hmm. they're the main character that you root for. Like when you watch um, the the Joaquin Phoenix Joker. Right. He's the antihero. You're right. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm with you. I'm with you. But yeah, Wolverine's another great answer there as well. Yeah. Two played out. Um, if a stranger contacts you and left them 50 long boxes of comics and they want oh, wow. to get rid of it for $5,000 or best offer, what would you do? I mean, I got to know. I got to know era. I got to know. Have they been picked? Yeah. Um, Fifty that that's five hundred dollars a box, and that's way too much for a long box of comics unless it's golden. Wait, age. give me give me the math again. How so many boxes? Hundred is that's a hundred dollars. Fifty yeah, long boxes at a hundred dollars a piece would be five thousand. So yeah. that is way too much for a long box. 
when we had the quarter sale. I mean, a hundred bucks a box is is two hundred fifty comics, three hundred comics. Yeah. So it's more than a quarter. You're paying more than a quarter a piece for them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then, I mean, it's the it's the you never and know. It's, and it's all X Men number one, Jim Lee. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's all it is. It's fifty long boxes of that. So well, you know, I would have if, to see it. If there's I'd a ten percent chance there's a Hulk 181 in it, though. If he says, yeah, okay, so I first mean, of all, I'm never paying when somebody asks. I'm never, I'm never paying when somebody asks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So best offer, what would you offer them? I guess for fifty long boxes, and you just know that it was their dad's. It was oh, their dad, and, okay. and their dad was in his seventies. If I could get it for twenty five hundred, I'd be in. I'd probably go to three. Okay. So, but say, somebody would have to. Say so, that, well, I'd be divorced. So we say <laughs> we're going to say these are bagged and boarded. So we're going to say you can only get 250 comics per box mm-hmm. times 50. That's 12,500 comics, and you're going to give them 2,500 dollars. That's a nickel a piece. Yep, that's pretty good. That's yeah. pretty good. Because so I was just, so, just the volume of work. So 5,000 would have been. Been, I had it at 40 cents a piece, so I don't know what your math's going on. What is my wrong with my math? 2,500. What did I say? It's okay. So 50 boxes, and I'm saying there's 250 comics in the box, and that's 12,500. Then I multiply that by, or no, I divide that. That's what I did wrong. I divide that <laughs> by your $2,500. That gives, you, it gives me a nickel. Okay. Maybe you're right. You got her. So 20, I said 12,5. Oh, five. So, <laughs> if you gave him five thousand for it, that'd be twenty-five. Cents. I don't. I don't understand my math. My math. It was fifty cents. It was not a nickel. It was fifty cents a piece for your twenty. I don't know. I'm confused. Anyway, <laughs> paying more than I'm going to pay. I'm. I'm going to give him a grand for fifty long boxes because I don't know what. Jeez. But if they tell me. If they tell me there's nothing, that everything's from the 70s or before, then, yeah, maybe it is worth that much. I don't know. I, I, I With not being able to look, and if it's just all stuff I have, I've already picked through on long boxes at quarter sales, I would be really bummed. Mm-hmm. You know? It'd still be fun, though. It would be a good time. But, yeah, I could. I mean, my, my wife could never know. She could never know. You'd have to take it to your grave. But, I mean, that's the dream. In, in all reality, when you do this stuff, the dream is somebody's like, I got a big collection that I'll sell you fairly cheap. Yeah. And you're just like, I know more than most people. And ha ha. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah. You, you, the dream is you want to rip somebody off. <laughs> so you don't want, you wouldn't say, you wouldn't be Johnny honest and say, well, you should probably look some of these up and see how much they're worth before I have you an honest offer. You would just try to steal from them. Grandma, you would try to steal from a grandma. I see what you're doing. I'm ashamed yeah. of you. I'm yeah. ashamed of you. Why would you do that? Be- well, because it could be full of 181s and keys. <laughs> it Again, could be the promised it's, it's collection. Not, it's not the idea of stealing from somebody. You 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 know me well enough to know that I'm obsessed with like, oh, I got this for this. Ha, how yeah. awesome is that? You, you like the deal. You like the bargain. Yeah. And it's not, it's not that I want. I want somebody who's like, I really want to get rid of these. And I want to be like, yeah. well, I will help you to do that, and I will give you a, a, a several thousand dollars to do so. Yeah, I'll just wait for my brother to die, and then I'll get a whole big collection. Yeah, but that that <laughs> that wouldn't be worth five thousand. No, <laughs> by the time I've picked through them, <laughs> right? <laughs> wait, I thought there was an ASM three hundred. <laughs> yeah, unless there's a resurgence in Fish Police and Why the Last Man comics, I think you're going to be in trouble. But yeah, I I. I know we we saw that story this week with the Detroit guy that found the giant collection, mm-hmm. and that would that would be fun, but I, I, it's never going to happen to me. I'm not that lucky. Kyle and I were talking earlier off air about the, our <laughs> luck this week, and between the two of us, we're like, who was it? is it Lot or Job in the Bible that went it's through all Job. the trials? Job, yeah. yeah, that's us. That's us this week. We've all had a very, very a, rough couple of weeks. We've had a rough couple of weeks. So no, there ain't going to be any any great collections falling. 
Yeah. But there might be some great Marvel books coming in our lives Ooh. if we take a look at the Marvel previews. Greatest segue ever. <laughs> hey, Drew, I found a nice little life hack. Guess what it is? Uh, I wonder. I, I might have the same thing. You tell there me. You go. It's these neat little magic mind elixirs. It's this little uh, little all-natural drink to drink in the morning. A productivity drink, I think they call it. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's pretty cool stuff. It's it's got matcha in it, which yeah, uh, I've never been able to like afford matcha because it's a very high price mm-hmm. like green tea. Uh, that's I don't know. They pull it from the mountaintops or something. Yeah. <laughs> and it's and but it, it's like a concentrated version of ma- matcha, and it's like the best green tea flavor you'll ever taste. Absolutely. But I, I I drink this with my coffee in the mornings. And uh, work days, um, my mornings are uber productive. Uh, I don't know, like, I'm, I'm not bouncing off the walls or anything. I just have, like, a little more energy, a little more clarity. You know, it's not, it it's it makes my my mind magic, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? See, for me, it solved a nice little problem. I have this unfortunate energy drink obsession. I drink uh-huh. one to get ready in the morning as I go, you know, the 140 milligrams of caffeine or whatever but then midway through my eight-hour day, I talk myself into having a second one, and that's a little too much. It becomes kind of an expensive yeah. day. Uh, that's a lot of caffeine, and I'm still getting the crash from it. So I'm working on weaning my way off of that second energy drink, just having a little bit of caffeine in the morning. And these Magic Minds help me kind of finesse that way through, keep the sustained energy through the day, and not have to do a whole nother yeah. Big giant energy drink the second yeah. half of the day. It's cut my <laughs> my pots of coffee from two to one, which is you know a healthy choice. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I, I'm burning through these, um, so I'm going to be using our code uh, to restock. And uh, you go to magicmind.co/slash/comicsfunprofit and use our code comicsfunprofit. You get 56% off the subscription for the next 10 days with this code. Um, you can use that same code, uh, Comics Fund Profit, for, to get 20% off, but you get 50% off if you do the subscription model um, in the next 10 days. So 56% off. They're really hooking you up. Yeah, more than half. More than half. I'm, I'm no math whiz, but that's pretty good. So, yeah, Absolutely. check out check out Magic Mind. We like it, um, and we think it's, make, it's, it's helping us make some healthy choices, which is, what, which is what we need to do. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to pull up our Marvel previews. This is March for May for 2023. Of course, Drew and I would like to go through the previews catalog, see what's coming up, um, figure out if there's anything we need to have, must have. But for the most part, we just end up making fun of the decisions that Marvel and DC make lately. On the front, we have yet another iteration of our good Avengers friends. So we shall see. Is this the new one? Did I give you the wrong one? You sent me this one, and it's March. I think we should be doing April. We should be in April, should we not? We're going to have to move on and let me do a little Googling and see if I grab the wrong one. <laughs> let's go to let's go to CBSI. Yeah, see, I told you, we've had a bad... We've had, it really we've had has bad been. luck. But let's start off with the Hot 10. Our good friends at comicbookinvest.com put out a Hot 10. We are... Narrowly a week left late on these because uh, CBSI changed their schedule and we are a little bit behind them. But let's see what the uh, what is it the March 24th Hot 10 list and starting at their number one item it is the Mandalorian number the eight the EM Gist Wonder Con variant limited to 800. Uh, these con variants seem to do quite well. We saw a bunch of New York con, Comic Cons up on the list earlier in the year and what else. So let this be a lesson. Always go to conventions and always buy the limited things. So Mandalorian number eight, currently asking upwards of over $80. EM Gist just continues to kill it. And we do mean kill it. Beatrix Kiddo again, Oren. So yeah, very good. Uh, very, very good cover there with Din Djarin and... Uh, Baby Yoda on the front of that. It can't be Debbie. Yeah. You don't like it? Yeah, it's okay. I think it's very good. Number two, Catwoman, number 52, the Will Jack Wonder Con. Very, again, asking for $80 on this. Has Will Jack surpassed some other well-known artists? No, it's okay. 
It's not great. I will still take Sozomiyaki every single time. At rank three, Lazarus Planet, Revenge of the Gods. Number one, the Danielle Supre- or Sampier foil, one in 50. This one in 50 is going for over $125. Anytime you pair up gold foil with Wonder Woman, it is likely to be a hit. This appears to be just that thing. I actually don't like that at all. Ooh, and a book I have several of, and I'm excited for. At rank four, we have Kane in the last Padawan, number 10. Was 10 to $15, now 30 to 40 So many Star Wars characters are speculated on. Very few of them turn out to be hits. So buyer, beware. At rank five, we have Milestone, the 30th anniversary special. Number one, your boy, Bill Sienkiewicz. <laughs> one in 25 variant. Of course, the 25 ratio going for 55 or 50 to 85 bucks. That's always a good thing. Other than it being a sideways cover, I can't find one thing negative to say about it. Sync style is one that is pretty easy to spot from way off. At rank six, we have Punisher number 219. Uh, was a $25 book, now a $50 and more book. Punisher War Machine is definitely an interesting concept. Now people are speculating this may happen with John Barenthal. The seventh place goes to Red Goblin number one, but not the one we all bought. This is the second print, Alexander Lozano, one in 25 variant. Between 50 and $60, would assume that most retailers weren't super excited about ordering even more Red Goblin books. This might make this one hard to find, but does anybody really care? Yeah, the people that have it really want it to be hard to find. <laughs> exactly. Deceased War of the Undead Gods number seven, the Ben Oliver variant. 10 to $15, yet another Purple Rain homage. These publishers know that there are hundreds of other iconic album covers they could copy, right? Guess not. At rank nine, we have Batman, One Bad Day, Raish Al Ghul, number one, the Brian Boland, one in 100 variant, going for $110. That's not good. Pouting Raish is probably not his best look. That being said, this isn't the worst cover and is likely not all that plentiful. And at rank 10, we have Shazam, Fury of the Gods, the AMC edition, $10. There are likely a lot of these out there, and like the Batman movie books of last year, the excess will probably end up in the Walmart multipacks. We didn't get anything for seeing the movie. No. Honorable mentions, we have Archie 660, the Dan Parent variant, going for $120. Another Archie book that is not that easy to find and features all of Riverdale's females. And from the honorable mention, we have Personal love number 32, a 10 center. CGC 9.2 going for $2,000. Kurt Douglas cover and early Frazetta art. So much history in these random, random books. Well, let's at least see if we can do an FOC. Can we do an FOC for what this weekend? So it'd be 4 2. Absolutely. Of course, final order cutoff is what we mean when we call it FOC. This is our last chance to. Add a few books to our orders, get thing pushed through. Maybe we see something late. Maybe we catch some interest in some fire with something. And we don't want to chase things on the secondary market, but we understand. If we add things to our FOC a couple weeks in advance, we are gravy. I get a wonderful PDF Excel sheet, or not PDF, but Excel sheet from our good friends at Cowabunga Comics and Deep Discount Comics that shows I me guess exactly. You could, you could get a PDF too if you wanted. I could probably. Yeah. I can get whatever I want. And it just helps me order. It shows me exactly what price things are and allows me to really uh, spend more money for the most part, actually. <laughs> but it's awesome to go through uh, looking at that Excel sheet and see if there's anything we just have to have. We are heading over to Lunar Distributions to run through the items with a due date of April 2nd. Uh, Kyle hates Michael Allred, but um, the B- Batman the Audio Adventures number seven is pretty cool. Him inside of a crocodile mouth. I like that very much. Looks pretty slick. Not bad. I mean, I, I don't hate Allred art. I just don't like it. Yeah, what? Isn't that the same thing? Things I do not no, like are things no. I also hate? No. No? Okay. All right. Uh, detective. Um, uh, a slew of cool ones. Uh, we've got the Ivan Rice. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with his cow, but it's kind of creepy. Uh, Kelly Jones is, you know, big, tall, bad ear Kelly Jones, of course. 
There's a Sebastian Fiamura, which I'm not that's familiar. That's exactly the one I'm looking at. It looks yeah, awesome. I'm like, I'm not familiar with that, but that's kind of him. Him, but that's kind of cool. I like yeah. like what he's doing there. I do not like Spider Web Batman on the Kelly Jones. Yeah, I think Kelly Jones is an acquired too. Some people love, which I do think a little bit. Kyle, love that date. Go ahead. Yeah, I know you're going to talk about that, David Nakayama yep. Green Arrow. It's exactly what I was pointing out. I love that cover C for Green Arrow. Green background, Green Arrow, Green Bow, Green Arrow, Green everything. Green blank, even. Green blank, can't beat it. Yeah. We got a Frank Cho foil um, for the Green Arrow. That It's just all Mockingbird, right? Not, yep. He's not even on there. Okay. So the, the regular cover B is that thing. And then we've got the foil. That's the one in 50 as well. It's the same one. Yeah. And then we've got a wraparound foil by Sean Izoxi, uh That looks like a pretty big group shot. I'm trying to zoom in a tad. See if I can see any of this. Um, yeah. A lot of rogues and mm-hmm. gang. The gang. It's pretty cool. Absolutely. Jenny Frizz and crushing the Harley Quinn 29. Does, yeah. As Frizzy, she does. Frizzy does Harley and Quinzel. Yeah. It's great. Um, I don't know who Matthias Bergara is, but I kind of like his stylized arty version. That's pretty cool, too. Another homage to Dark Knight Returns by the Impossible Team Up one shot, folks. Impossible Jones and Captain Lightning by Carl Kessel. Carl Kessels, you're better than that. <laughs> we don't need any more Dark Knight Returns homages in our lives. It's like a ASM 300 homage. We don't need any more of those. Yeah. Sienkiewicz has done a cover on all of these Riddler Year One books, correct? Uh, I don't know. I'm not there yet. Wait a minute. Um, Sorry. E- yeah, I think so. I think so. Really yes. great job on cover A for issue number four. Yeah. And this has been good. This has been a Good black label. Yeah. It's Speaking nice of black label, black mask, going, getting a fourth printing out of Rogue State. All right. I don't think I read that. I think we might have been boycotting at the time. We still are, yeah. Yeah. Taking our ball going home. <laughs> well, I dropped Tim Drake Robin. I know he's your favorite Robin. Oh, my gosh. Everybody's favorite Robin. How could you do such a thing? Yeah, I dropped it. Especially with that David... Uh, Talaski cardstock variant. Oh, is that a Norman Rockwell homage yeah. there? Okay. That's fine. Whatever. It's fine. It's fine. Let's see what Image got for us. Maybe they'll brighten our day. Yeah, of course. Always. Ambassadors gets a second print for its first issue. That's cool. Mm-hmm. A lot of trade stuff. Bloodstained teeth. Dead Romans gets a second print. I did not like that book that much. Oh, yeah? No, I was not a fan. Deep Cuts, what's that? Kyle Higgins, oh, okay, that's your boy. Mm-hmm. This is this is your boy, but it's not a massive verse, so I can get behind it. <laughs> yeah. Not a superhero, this is like the jazz, right? Maybe a jazz Chicago type of story? Yeah, yeah, this looks good. Indigo Children's first issue gets a second print, and we get the second issue as well. Local Men, second issue gets a second print, and we're on issue three. And Lovesick finishes up with its seventh issue. Weird seven-issue series. That's, That's yeah, strange it's an number. Six typically your storyline, but it just had so much more to say. Oh, Righteous Thirst for Vengeance Deluxe Edition hardcover. Um... This is fantastic. Uh, this would be great in a deluxe hardcover. Um, it's beautiful to look at. Um, if you don't believe me, um, <laughs> go go to your library and they get it, or go to the Barnes and Noble or your comic shop and thumb through it if it's not sealed up, um, because it, you'll just be blown away. It's so good. I mean, usually I'm a writer. Give me the words over the art. But this is, I, I just love the art. Come in for the art, stay for the writing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's Rick Remender, too. So he's no slouch. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the furthest place from here? It's issue 12. I'm 
still really enjoying this. Got weird for a while, leveled out a little bit. I'm enjoying this book. Glad I'm still with it. Grimm's at 10. Yep. Neighbors and at they're, two. They're coming down. They're coming down. The, the covers aren't as good anymore. They were. They were really. Yeah. Yeah. They were really kind pushing of, it with the covers, and now I'm I'm just very disappointed. Neighbors was really a strange debut. Um, so its second issue is out, and um, it kind of like just meandered for a while. I couldn't really figure out what it was trying to do. It got a little better at the end. I'm on the fence whether to read another one or not. I don't know. Stephanie Hahn's cover B is cool. It is very cool. Yes, you're right. And the cover says you want were really good. They were strong. Star Wars High Republic Advanced Jedi Quest One Shot. Okay. There's a lot in there. <laughs> yeah. The back. On the ancient world of Angor, the Force works in unforeseen ways when legendary Jedi Knight Barnabas Vim and his intrepid Padawan Bly arrive on this mysterious world. Seeking an ancient artifact of the Force, they quickly find more than they were bargaining for. But just what is it? What is the mysterious Echo Stone? And what does its existence mean for the continued survival of those who call Angor home? Are you current on Mando? No, I'm one behind. I didn't watch this week yet. Oh, you're killing me. I was told it's boring. I don't know. I don't think that's true. It's different. Like, mm-hmm. like the, the, the one that you saw last week, was that the... the where that, the bird kidnaps the dude? Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, the one before that was when there was, like, Mando was even in it. Correct. It was when I was the, told this, this next one was the same thing. No, no, okay. no, it's, it's plenty of, of action. Really good. Excellent. But I do, I do have lots of questions. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure the answer is watch Clone Wars. <laughs> but I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> Down into Marvel. Cult of Carnage really um, puts the pin in the window shades variants for me. <laughs> Did you like it? Yeah. You like that one, don't you? It took a while to get there, though. Mm-hmm. So th- well, this, is, this is the third or fourth Demon Wars volume we've had. She's gotten quite a few, and they're beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And how do we have a new Edge of Spider-Verse, number one? I thought the last Spider-Verse was the end of all Spider-Verse. Into the other edge of the Spider-Verse. We're doing, uh, yeah, I guess I misread that. I thought that we were going to put a pin in it, cap it. But I guess the answer is money. So we're going to do gonna more. Say. Yeah. Uh, so a new, a new Edge of Spider-Verse. Well, maybe we'll uncover some new characters. Got to be aware yeah, of that, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. It's very possible. Something tells me we definitely will. Scariest spider-created character ever created. So that's a new breakout character. Could be. And I like, you know, the cover A is a dinosaur. So, you yeah, know, there's that. That's that's a plus, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Actually, Cover B's a, uh, a, or the connecting is a dinosaur as well. Groot gets another. And Peach Momoko doing Groot. I don't, I don't hate it. Mm. Pretty good. I don't know that we need a Groot series. Yeah, especially since he says one word. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, dude, give him one shot, maybe. Dude, but... look at your covers for Moon Knight. I'm not. Awful. No, they're great. Oh, okay. Who's um, the Stormbreaker cover? An awesome Declan Shalvey with a Venom Moon Knight. Have we ever seen that? Yeah, maybe not. Dude. Maybe not. Paul Renault with a really striking cover. You got a throw away in the stupid, you know, Stormbreakers one, but still. Well, that's somebody. I don't know who that is, but it's somebody. I should know, probably. Hey, Buzzle- Buzzaldo or... The fact that it's it's a uh, Star Lord. Is that Star Lord? Yeah, it's Star Lord. What's up with his hand? His gun. That's his gun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess it is Star Lord. It's just uh, poor. It's just very poorly done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was like, yeah, maybe that's uh, that must be something they're doing. Star Lord or Gal- Guardians of the Galaxy characters yeah. inserted on stuff. Cause I doubt I doubt very much he's in the story. Correct. I don't know how you'd wedge him in there. Declan Shalvey gets a nice cover, too. Okay, so I don't... I Okay, I like the Spider-Man number eight Liefeld homage. That's pretty dope. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, I can see that. <gasps> oh, no. Uh-oh. I have to have that. Crap, I'm it? in trouble. What is it? Darth Maul hologram, Christopher, or Christopher action figure of Star Wars 34. You don't have to have that. I love Maul. I love Maul. You do. You do love Maul. Unfortunate. Spider-Man 2099, Dark Genesis number one. I I don't get that. Don't get it. Oh, well. Just some Vampirella. Uh, That's all we're going to get from Dynamite. (laughs) You are in a hurry to get out of Marvel. (laughs) You were at the end. Nah, it was still Yodas and all kinds of stuff. Like, did you see the cover of Yoda cover A? Number seven? Yeah, that's was that Grievous in the back? Yeah. Yeah, that was that's pretty cool. Awesome. That, that was pretty cool. Yeah. I wonder if the Yoda book's good. I think I only read the first issue. I decided it couldn't be, so I didn't jump in. Yeah, I didn't even it. try, right? That's yeah, what I, was, I think that might have been what I was doing, too. Like, yeah. eh, this can't be good. That Mandalorian comic was just so awful. Well, it wasn't, re- it wasn't new stories. Why would we do that? Why would anybody do that? I don't. I don't know what they were thinking. Easy cash grab, I guess. I mean, I'm sure it worked on some people. Yeah, yeah, obviously somebody's buying it. Or I think wasn't there one of one of the one of the covers was like doing well in secondary market too. So. Oh yeah. What nots doing Astro But it bots. ain't for reading. It ain't what? It ain't for reading. No, no, don't don't waste your time. Oh man. Is what, is what not the only one putting out a number one this for the back half? <laughs> not much. Uh, some all agey stuff. Mm, Rawhead Reborn. That's American mythology. I don't know what that is. Doesn't mm-hmm. look great. Man, back half slim pickings for the FOC phase anyway. Kyle, I only have one pick, and I hope you don't take it. I got three here. Okay. So I'll go. Okay. Deep Cuts, Kyle Higgins, your boy. Um, yes, my boy. You get a little, little jazz, New Orleans, 1917. Uh, sounds in the music business. Sounds kind of interesting, different. Mm-hmm. Not a superhero book. Like it. All right. So there's obviously this. Star Wars 34 with my boy Darth Maul hologram on the front. Right. I love it. Gotta have it. But that's, it? that's me talking with my heart. So that's not going to be. Okay. It. Heart overhead. I gotcha. Then there is Spider Man number eight, the Liefeld homage variant. Okay. Very cool. There's Star Wars High Republic Adventures Jedi Quest One shot. Gotcha. From my DW. The, uh, I'm seeing now that it's a resolicit. So we've actually talked about this one before. But because for Horse? that. That was, yeah, Dark Horse. So because of that, because it's a recent one, I'm going to say no on that one. Say no, okay. So I'm going to jump into Marvel. Okay. And I'm going to say we have to have this Edge of Spider-Verse 1. You think? Okay. Yeah, I think they're going to keep making these worth our wild. And it, it's the dinosaur cover, right? Well, there's two dinosaur covers. I'm going for a cover, the connecting cover. The, the connecting uh, dinosaur. Cover. Jose Maria Casanovas. Gotcha. Connecting cover. All right. I will allow it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Even though I'm not <laughs> sure what it connects to. I'm hoping it connects to issue two and yes. issue three and issue four. Yeah, very, very cool. But we had a, uh, a slew of things that we uh, probably should have had. All right, Kyle, let's t- let's go over to our friends at um, Comic Book Comics Heating Up and CBSI. And All right, I'm having over to about. cover price, but you can go wherever you want. But I'm heading over yeah. to cover price, and I'll get their cover weekly price. top That's 10. Right. And I'm going to start with the number one book, Deceased, War of the Undead mm-hmm. Gods, number seven, the Ben Oliver homage, of course, Purple Rain, Purple Rain. You and I were just talking about this song the other day during mm-hmm. a family function. 15 bucks for all, $9 fair market value, and it's not as good as the last one we got. No brainer. That was a no-brainer. Yep. At rank two, we have no one. The Geraldo Borges regular cover. Um, you can get them for four bucks, but we did see thirty-six copies move on the secondary market. Fifteen dollars was the high. Murderers, killers, vague vigilantes, and political ramifications to make this new noir storyline from Kyle Higgins and Brian Bicholetto a popular one. 
At rank three, we have Deadly Neighbors, Spider-Man, number five, the one Ferrerar. Ferrerara? Regular. Last week, we saw this issue drop a few spots since its debut. However, it refuses to drop further this week. It stubbornly holds on to the number three spot. While movement on this issue has slowed, it is still an issue to watch interest, uh, and it is waning by minuscule amounts, and fans are determined to get their hands on the first appearance of the Dream Spider. $111 for CGC 9.8. 21 bucks if you can find the book. Okay. Image, 30th anniversary anthology number eight from last year. James Tinney IV is perhaps one of the most loved horror writers in comics today. Do you agree with that, Drew? Um, yeah, I don't know who number two would be. His latest hit, Blue Book, was on our top ten upon its release last month as fans anticipated his next project, World Tree. They are settling for the preview in this issue of the anniversary anthology. If the next series is as big of a hit as Something is Killing the Children, this preview will likely increase in value. Tracked 35 copies on the secondary market, $129 for CGC 9.8, and current market value for 29 bucks. Scott Snyder, maybe? Does he do enough horror to be considered a horror writer? All he had to do was witches, and he hit number one for me. Yeah, there you go. Star um, Wars. So I, I would be I was surprised that this would have been the image anthology to hit, but I I would have thought it would have been the Brubaker, but that was I guess m- my heart over my head talking. Um, so this is cool. I like the fact that it's a, it's an anthology. Um, going back to the Dark Horse Presents days when those things would hit. Uh, yeah, we've talked about those anthologies and yeah, Presents uh, being like your first little snippet of things. Your first appearance. Boom, it's going to be right here. I, I like that. That's old school comic book collecting right here on display. At rank five, Star Wars, Dr. Abe for number 19, the Chris Sprouse Lucasfilm's 50th anniversary. Bo-Katan has moved from random cameo appearances to a series regular in season three of The Mandalorian. Story arcs are being placed for her and her future role within the clan. In the most recent episode, Bo-Katan takes on an even more prominent leadership role, showing that she is beginning to adjust to the old ways of the Mandalore. Nine dollars fair market value. CGC nine point eight for eighty bucks. Yeah. At rank six, X Men two twenty one from nineteen eighty seven. Since last year, there have been rumors that Mister Sinister was cast for an undisclosed MCU film. The actor reportedly playing the role is Javier Bardem. Tracked twenty two copies sold. Uh, CGC nine point eight three hundred and seventy dollars. Oh. Um, you're gonna if you want to find these in near mint condition, we're looking at sixty six bucks. So. We shall see if Mr. Sinister uh, makes an appearance or not. Daredevil 183 from 1982. Frank Castles versus the Devil of Hell's Kitchen. Sounds like a damn movie or <laughs> damn monster movie. It is a match of epic proportions. No infinity stones, no magical weapons or godlike powers. Two men, warring moralities, and nothing but brutal no holds barred fighting for justice. Yeah. 20 copies on the secondary market, $135 for CGC 9.6. So 9.8 is probably commanding over 400 bucks. Fair market value for near mint, 31 bucks. Love that cover too. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, the Omega Men, number three from 1983. Lobo's first appearance is as wild as the character himself. While some weeks we see this first appearance at the bottom of our runner-up lists, this week it spiked back to the top of our top 10 despite no new news or recent rumors. Tracked 14 copies on the secondary market, a CGC 9.8 going for as much as $375, and 96 bucks if you're trying to catch that near mint raw. Wow, Berserker number one, the Raphael Grandpa regular. This was the 2021, I remember when Berserker hit hard from the beginning. While John Wick 4 may have nothing to do with the series, it still turned up the heat for anything Keanu Reeves. Since the series debuted, there have been unofficial mentions of a film and animated show in development for Berserker. While this news has come from many sources, an official announcement has yet to ever be made. Nevertheless, this highly accessible issue lands at the top 10 for the first time, tracking 10 copies. Uh, CGC 9.8, 75 bucks. Near Mint Rawls, 12 bucks. That is so crazy that John Wick made that move, that book move. I can't, I can't, yeah, I mean, and I thought it was higher than that. I guess there yeah. was a ton of these, right? There was like a million There's copies of this. So many covers, so many everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. just dumb. And Milestone, the 30th anniversary special, number one, the Bill Sienkiewicz one in 25. Um, <laughs> what is better than a Kia shoe? 
the answer a retailer incentive key issue overflowing with nostalgia static beyond an older version of the character makes his grand debut in this issue to add to this issue's awesomeness the story is reminiscent of the 2000 tv show episode where virgil meets batman terry mcginnis static beyond plays the role of a mentor to the new batman in a fantastically illustrated story of this anniversary special to top it off single bitch delivers a stunning lineup of dc characters for this one in 25 ratio cover we saw 12 copies sold 110 dollars for the raw being the high uh settling closer to the 76 dollar mark i was wondering if this would be an accessible read for me i don't know i'm not, not really milestone savvy so it might be a challenge who knows? Yeah. Time for a break from our show to pay the bills. Check out beacons.ai slash comics fun profit for all the C4 FAP links you could ever need all in one place. You can provide feedback, listen, support, share, enjoy these. We have our Patreon there. You can buy us a beer or a coffee. You can check out our Instagrams, our Twitters, our Facebooks. Check out our YouTube page. You can email us. You can listen to our podcasts on Patreon, if you're a subscriber, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, on Podbean. We have Google Podcasts on there. We have an Amazon wish list. You want to buy Kyle and I something? Fine. You can do that here. We appreciate it. We have Kyle's RPG podcast listed on there, so you can check out his Dork Day Afternoon offerings. We have Cowabunga links, so you can check out the Cowabunga Deep Discount FOC and Pre-Order List. Get on that. That's our LCS, so you can check that out as well. And we want to just give you opportunities to say hi, to check out what we're doing, support us if you would like, or just listen. Check out beacons.ai slash comics fun profit for all the c4 fap links you could ever need thanks back to the show at rank 11 we have a uh, iron fist number 14 from 1977 uh saber tooth's first appearance uh this is 13 copies moving high sale of one thousand three hundred and eighty four dollars for a cgc 9.6 Ugh. pretty good uh, rank 12, we have Spider-Man number one, the silver from 1990. Continues to sell. 24 more copies sold. Rawls at 23 bucks. Um, that's a quarter book, folks. Rawls at 23 bucks. And uh, CGC 9.9 going for $1,000. Ooh, the rare 9.9. Nine. Yeah. Shouldn't be, but whatever. It's a scam. Uh, rank 13, <laughs> The Punisher, number one from 1987, uh, high sale of $233.75 for a CGC 9.8 with a raw fine around $33. Everybody wants a raw fine. That's what they're looking for. Uh, rank 14, we have Ultimate Fallout, number four. Man, I should have bought this a long time ago when it was affordable. Uh, Raw's. $563 for a near mint. And uh, CGC 9.8, um, about 1800 bucks. That is down. Uh, this is, of course, the first Miles Morales. Um, this was pushing the $3,000 book, wasn't it, uh, during the COVID highs? Yeah, during uh, the crazy, crazy COVID spike. Yeah. And I might be getting it confused with ASM 300, which is next uh, in rank 15. Um, how many of these moved? 21 copies of these moved. Uh, Rawls, also $571 for near mints. And a high sale of $1,600 for CGC 9.6. So uh, that would be sold for a lot more, a little higher. And that's for Finum, of course. At uh, rank 16, we have Captain America 606. Um, this is the first appearance of Janice Lincoln, the daughter of Tombstone as the beetle um rumors are swirling that she could appear <laughs> in daredevil born again um and that means that one video podcast has said it oh to the other video podcast and that's because now it's a swirling rumor i'm sure that's why 21 copies sold a uh, high sale of 10 bucks for a raw and uh that's it that's it 21 copies sold and we got 10 bucks for a raw on that rumor, um, Star Wars: The Mandalorian number one, the book I was just making I was fun say, of. We just referenced this as the one that spiked prior. Yeah, 
first uh, first Grogu cameo, the first traditional comic with Din Djarin and the armor in it. Um, 19 copies sold, high sale of 135 for a CGC 9.6. You can't get a 9.8 out of this book that came out not even a year ago. Come on. Uh, rank 18, we have Venom, Lethal Protector number one from 1993. Another quarter book. 20 copies moving, high sale of 140 for a 9.8, and Raw's at 30 bucks. At uh, rank 19, Batman One Bad Day, Raw's Ghoul number one. This just came out. This is the one in 100, Brian Bolin. So three copies sold. So three <laughs> copies sold across all of eBay's. Um, with a high sale of $105 for a one in 100. Okay, that makes sense. At rank 20, we have uh, another Star Wars Mandalorian. This is number eight, um, the WonderCon variant. I forgot about this one. Um, and uh, seven copies of this one moved with a, hun- a high sale of 120 for a raw copy because it's a WonderCon. Really phoning in the last couple there, not really moving a ton of books. Yeah, they must have, they had trouble finding 20 books, I think. I think they had they had a challenge. Mm-hmm. Let's slide over for what Kyle likes to say, what what the people come for. That's right, the meat on the bone, the lead pipe log, <laughs> the sneak of bacon on the weekend. Let's head on over <laughs> to Lunar Distributions and see our new releases for April the 4th. And let's start with a Superman book that you and I don't really care about. No. No, um, pretty, pretty covers, um, but I'm not reading that one. All right, I'm in love. The the are you, are you liking the Tom King April Fool's cardstock? Yes, cover. I friggin' love that. There's a whole bunch of them. Uh, That's coming. amazing. So yeah, um, the, and I don't know that this was ever FOC'd. No, it wasn't. It's the first I've seen this. Yeah. I know he knew. That he put, I'm sorry, Bob. <laughs> That's awesome. I love everything about that. Yeah, it's great. It's very, it's great. And you know what? People are going to snap this up for cons. Yeah. To get signed. Um, they're going to, this thing is going to go a, a <sighs> crap. I want one. But the Stanley it's, Art Germ ain't bad either. I was just right about now. to say, there is a gorgeous Art Germ beside it, and I didn't even blink. Yeah. It's it's basically Tom King's stick figures. Um, yeah. It, he's not an artist. He's a terrible artist. But he, draw, we... he draws um, panel layouts, mm-hmm. you know, with stick figures to give the artist an idea of what he's looking for. And sometimes they make it into uh, <laughs> into covers. <Yeah. laughs> it's great. Man, that's so cool. Please don't do this deluxe hardcover of Batman Spawn. I have two copies of this book. Just buy it for me. Uh, 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 uh. We've got uh, Batman Vengeance of Bane. Number one, a facsimile edition. I didn't realize we needed that. All right. Very cool. And a uh, code name Ric Flair. The Magic 8-Ball one-shot. For you wrestling fans. Wrestling fans. Fables is nearing the end, 158 of 162. Oh, we've heard that before. This is true. Flash hits 796 on its march towards 800. How I Became a Shoplifter hits number three. It rhymes with Funt, trade paperback. <laughs> was the new with with a very vicious looking woman on the front. I wonder what. Oh, I think I see what they're going for. Oh I'll my. see you next Tuesday. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Joker, the man who stopped laughing, the Lee Bermejo cover sticks Joker in the back of a cruiser with his yeah. hand. And then hand Mentina up. puts him in seven mouths, and the Carmen <laughs> de Germanico is him good. Oh, they're all so good. And then Tom King and then <laughs> brings home the bacon with his crazy... <laughs> cover that's awful <laughs> that is awful <laughs> so but i think good. i think that'll get snapped up it's too so good i don't like it as much uh, so far the 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 winner the is the, better yep. yeah more beautiful poison, poison ivy. ivy yep <laughs> seb mckinnon oh that's awesome it is um uh, is it do you think it's a watercolor painting? Yes. That he's scanned for this? This is not I, photoshopped, right? I this want is this watercolor. I want this on, you know, burlap hanging in the in the living room. Burlap's a sack, right? Shut you up. Can, whatever. Are you thinking of canvas? Sure, go with that. 
<laughs> do you want it on a sack? Yes, I do. I want it on a sack of potatoes. <laughs> All right. I want, to, I want to go to the crane store. You're the, like a you're the, art, you're the art collector. <laughs> yeah. Modern art. Don't you dare tell me what to think about things. All you right. just don't have the vision. That's true. <laughs> I'm sorry. I stand corrected. You get it on burlap, bro. <laughs> Let's slide down to image and see what they've got. Why don't we go through the last couple pages of DC real quick? We didn't. Jeez. Didn't, didn't we? <laughs> what, what was left? Nightmare Country's trade paperback. Second Nothing. Trinity number Nothing one. Nothing was left. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, Let's head on over to the well, image look, books. Look where we're going. <laughs> yeah, we're going where I'm at. Hey Kids Comic, Volume 3, Number 1. Only Stock dummies read this book. New. Only one cover, that's great. Oh, I Hate This Place is back with its mm-hmm. new story arc. Probably should end. <laughs> Junk Rabbit. What is Junk Rabbit again? I forgot. It's Jimmy Robinson, a new hero rises from that's right. Of consumer waste. That's right. I was at Hudson Books. Uh, what else? What else? Saga 63. Oh, yeah. Yep. You love that cover. <laughs> it's During cool. the FOC day. Mm-hmm. Stillwater. Is this the final Stillwater? I believe it is. Series finale. That'll be good. All right. I, there's two unavailable Savage Dragon covers, so they're going to be weird. Uh, no, maybe not. It could be just that weird retro 70s that doesn't look that great. Might be good, but I, I don't know. I don't think those retro 70s are that good. No. Normally. I haven't liked anything Savage Dragon's done for a long time. No, me neither. I mean, very little from uh, Boom. A couple of comics. Hairball number one. Matt can't doing the art. Matt can't doing the writing. Is this another of the doing sub the cover art, but... Doesn't say. I can't remember if his stuff starts in Substack and comes over like um, some of Kenny and stuff. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people are doing, still doing Substack, though. Mm-hmm. It hasn't died on the vine like I thought it would. Heard Congress talking about it the other day. Substack? Yeah, because they're talking about the guy that did the Twitter Files League because they're like, you just did it to get more Substack. Oh, okay. What leaked? The when he the guy that did the Twitter files expose and all that stuff and then they got drugged to Congress. Oh, okay. Interesting. Only thing I've seen from Congress is them trying to understand what TikTok is. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That, that was pretty embarrassing. Um, Where monsters lie is on its third issue. Another another good one. Does Kyle Starks? Uh, if you like what I like, you'll like this. <laughs> I don't like menacing clowns in the depths of hell running a flamethrower while stomping on skulls, so I'm yeah, out. Yeah, well, they don't do it all the time. Just make a just pop in every once in a while. Just you know, every now and again. Are you a uh, Star Trek person, Kyle? No, but I love the Dogs of War number one baseball <laughs> homage. Yeah, I was wondering about that. It's kind of strange. I Maybe. like the Amazing Spider-Man 23, the Bacalo variant. That's the yeah. kind of fun I like. Yeah, that's pretty great. I love that one, too. The Disney book for their February, I'm sorry, their March releases. Man, it's got a February skew on it, so that's why I call it a February skew. Um, the Infinity Gauntlet one, it's kind of rad. Yeah, and at least it is, um, oh, no, I was thinking. There, was, was there a, is, there's a 1 in 100 version as well, the the black and white. I was saying, well, at least it makes sense that it's on the Avengers book, but it's not. It's on, it's on ASM. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't make any sense. All right. Look at that MODOK cover. Jeez. Yeah, it's Ross doing, Alex Ross doing MODOK. It's really nice. Mm-hmm. I am Iron Man. That first issue was weird. Don't know that I'm reading this next one. I think I'm out. Planet of the Apes, number one. Sure hey, you- there it is. Cool. Make sure you get the window shades. Ugh. Why is the window shade? Oh. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to read this, though. I like the Mike McCone, the simple. That's a really good cover. I like it. Holding the helmet. Yeah, it doesn't really scream Planet of the Apes to me, though. No, it doesn't. That's why I like it. Over the top. Monkeys. Monkeys sell, right? 
Still monkey selling yeah, comics? Yeah, yeah. Sex and monkeys, that's what they say. Well, not sex with monkeys, I hope. <laughs> oh, man. It's a completely different book. My apologies. Oh, uh, uh, yuck. Scarlet Witch, this fourth issue is coming out. This has been a really good surprise. I've enjoyed this a lot. That's well, a terrible Doc Ock that Alex Ross did, but I mean, it's <laughs> it's on brand. I mean, it's not like that's not what he looks like. You wait till you get to the Rhino and three more scrolls. That was a bad. Oh, yeah, that is awful. Lizard's not great either. Yeah, not great either. Dynamite. The big thing in Dynamite is Scar, of course, from the Lion King, the villain book Scar, and there are. 30 covers and <laughs> unlike Vampirello he's not in a bikini in any of them <laughs> there are some dope covers though American Dreams by Bards Bands of Bards is the is the publisher so it's American Dreams number one by Band of Bards and it's a 1900s era Jewish immigrant who gets superpowers, I guess. And he runs across Harry Houdini and Edison and J.P. Morgan and Aleister Crowley. What the heck is that? You lost me in 1900s. Yeah. I don't know about that one. Can you remember when we used to spend so much time in the back half? Dude, it was chock full, and now it's just chock full. Yeah. Uh, have 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 publishers just folded and just quietly folded, and volume is down so much, and from from small publishers that we just didn't notice, or has the really quality just disappeared from the back? Quality. Half? There still seems to be some vol- some numbers back here, but it's just, I don't know. Nasty number one from Vault Comic. Scotland, 1994. 18-year-old thumper Connell still has an imaginary friend. The mass killer from his favorite slasher film. <laughs> That's his imaginary friend? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, this sucks. Yeah, it's not great. All right, Kyle. I think I know what you're picking, but right, I'm gonna let you, you th- tell me what you think I'm picking. I think you're picking Batman 134 cover up. <laughs> you got me. Absolutely. If you can get it, get it. And if you see it and you're like, hey, you know, just get one for Kyle, too. And I'm going to go ahead and get Joker, the man who stopped laughing. Number seven. <laughs> That's awesome. Cover E. And we're going to do a couple of Tom King covers and we're going to see if we're right, because I think we're going to be right. Oh, yeah. and these are going to be hot. Uh, oh, yeah. because the last well there was a tom king cover before that i went a crap for and i don't know if it ever did get hot maybe it didn't i don't know we're gonna find out this my is love for a... top king seems no balance yeah yeah so now the thing is know. like okay tom king's covers or frank miller's covers they're it's kind of a coin flip <laughs> like which one's better <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to thank you for tagging along with Drew and myself as we crawl through our sneak peek at next week and all the items coming out as we head into April, into the new year, and all the fun, fun stuff. Oh, we thank you once again for being fans of ours. If you want to head over to uh, Patreon, search Comics for Fun and Profit, throw us a couple bucks, be part of the community, get in on the Slack conversations, um, some exclusive episodes and some fun stuff. I think Drew and I might record uh, some just random stuff. I kind of want to argue with him some more about Last of Us. Maybe we'll do that on a special <laughs> pod or something like Fantastic. that. Fantastic. Uh, all that fun stuff if can be had through our Patreon. We thank you guys and appreciate you for Drew and for myself. See ya. As you know, our LCS is Cowabunga Comics, Lake Country, Wisconsin's best pop culture destination for new comics back issues, gaming, retro video games, vinyl, and figures. Give them a call, 262-569-9999. Check them out online at cowabungacomics.com or follow them on Twitter at Incredicow. Uh, They are our LCS, and we utilize their deep discount mail order service to bring Oconomowoc, Wisconsin, closer to us. 
They'll take care of you. Tell them Drew and Kyle sent you. Say hi to Eric and James from us. If you need an LCS, you can't go wrong with Cowabunga Comics.